The scripture I chose for today is from the book of John. It's chapter 14, verses 1 through 7. Probably pretty familiar to you. Hear the word of the Lord. This is Jesus speaking. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to be with myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Let us pray. Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit, illumine your word and make it come alive and write it on our hearts today. Amen. Well, it's probably not a surprise for you to know that I use this scripture a lot in my hospice work. Um, dying people have a lot of questions. Where will I go? In this scripture, Jesus says, well, I'm preparing a place for you in my father's house. How will I get there? Jesus says, I'm going to come and take you to be with me. And added to that, despite all of their questions, is Jesus' comforting completion to this section where he says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not let them be afraid. Now, this is a, it's a very good and powerful thing for me to be able to tell people who are at the uh, end of their lives. But the truth is, we all have tons of questions too. We have a ton of questions that arise because of COVID and fears of our own mortality and those whom we love. We've had a ton of anxiety over the presidential transition. All of the things that are going on in our lives, even on, on a regular basis, cause us to ask how, when, why, where. It can make our head spin. And the disciples were no different they were constantly asking Jesus questions. They asked, what, they asked Jesus, when will you establish your kingdom? And Jesus said, only God knows that. I don't even know. Um, Peter said, Lord, where are you going? Where? And Jesus said, where I'm going, you cannot follow me now, but you'll follow afterward. Thomas said, if we don't know your destination, how can we know our itinerary? And the, the, the truth is the disciples didn't always like Jesus' answers or even understand them. And neither do we. A very important question that maybe they didn't ask often enough is who? Early on in Jesus' ministry, um, Peter uh, got it right when, when Jesus said, who do you say that I am? And Peter says, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. But the problem is that the disciples kept forgetting who they were dealing with. And I don't blame them because this was a very dangerous question to, to answer and got Jesus and the disciples 
in a lot of trouble. In fact, it led to Jesus' death and to the scattering of the disciples to answer, who do you say that I am? But this is such a powerful scripture. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And where I think sometimes the disciples got confused, and we do, is that the way of Jesus is a relationship. It's not a direction or a method or a 10-step program. What Jesus is saying is, I am God in the flesh. And Jesus said, whoever believes in me, believes not in me, but in him who sent me. And whoever sees me, sees him who sent me. Jesus' claim is, I am God. A number of theologians um, write lots of words, but some of them are actually very illuminating. I really like Leslie Newbegin, who says that it's not that Jesus teaches the way or guides us in the way. If that were so, we could thank him for his teaching and then proceed to follow it on our own. But he himself is the way. And to follow this way is, in fact, the only way to the Father. This is not to say that God has left no witness to himself in the rest of the life of the world. We have, in fact, been told that Jesus is the light that lightens every person. And, of course, we could, we could certainly go down the road about salvation and Jesus being the only way, but that's not what we're doing today because we're talking about questions. Another theologian named F.F. Bruce said, all truth is God's truth. All life is God's life. But God's truth and God's life are made incarnate in Jesus. Or as my fave Dale Bruner says, the way there is the who's here. I've been thinking a lot about this scripture. As I, I've said in the devotions that some of you might read, that Nick and I have decided that we're going to be preaching primarily on lectionary scriptures. And this is not the lectionary scripture this week, but it's been, this scripture has been coming to my mind and my heart. I've been meditating and chewing on it for quite some time. And part of it is what's been going on in the world around us um, and in the news. Um, I really liked what John Meacham said. He said, our country is torn right now between conflicting visions of reality and identity. And I think this scripture has really been speaking to me uh, really loudly ever since the, 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 the riots in the Capitol on Epiphany, on our Epiphany, on Christ's Epiphany. And um, we're people who claim to be following the way of Jesus um, stormed into the Capitol with banners that said Jesus 2020 and, you know, crosses on American flags. And um, in the wake of that, of course, there was a, many people saying, this is not who we are. And I've been thinking to myself, yes, it is who we are. We are drawn to power. We tend to split into us versus them. And we all claim that Jesus is on our side, which we know is not possible. Jesus convicted me with this scripture about how I had seen the last four years. When um, President Trump was elected, I was very alarmed. Um, and I think, um, and I marched with thousands and thousands of primarily women all over, the, all over the country because I saw very clearly what I thought, um, how he was a danger to our country. But what I didn't see was the promise that many people saw in him. And I and I realized that when President Biden was being inaugurated and such a hope welled up in me cuz I could really see the promise all everything that I wanted him to do. And I don't think I'm as clear about the danger that um, his leadership might pose. 
I think what I was grappling with and what I've come to um, is just a, a struggle to know that, you know, presidents are not saviors. And, um, and I know that may sound obvious, but I think that we've gone to a point in our country where people are willing to follow a leader because they think they're going to transform everything. And that is found in Jesus alone. Because scripture reminds us that God offers us to know the Jesus Christ who's revealed in scripture. And by the way, if you're disturbed about what's going on these days and doesn't matter, you know, which way you lean, if, if you want to um, be practicing Jesus' commandment to love one another, find a politician or a news commentator or a family member that doesn't agree, agree with you on how the world should be run and pray for them. But pray for them to know Jesus, not to think like you think. Peter asked Jesus, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. And Jesus, of course, tells him, by the time the sun rises, you will have denied me three times. Because who isn't the only dangerous question? So is how. I mean, not how, why? <laughs> I'm getting my questions confused. Why is a dangerous question. And why is a question you'd think I would get a lot more from my hospice patients. And I'm always so surprised when, when not many of them ask me why. And we as modern day disciples sometimes don't ask enough. Why? Why did God self-reveal in Jesus Christ? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believed in him would not die, but have everlasting life. Why? So that Jesus could overcome the power of sin and death in our world, in creation itself. Why? So that humanity could be freed from this power to love God and to love one another, to release the power of the Holy Spirit so that humanity could be freed up to be conformed more and more into God's likeness, and so humanity could be equipped to partner with God to build the kingdom of God on earth. And the why inevitably leads us back to who again? It leads us back to the central figure for us, who is Jesus Christ. President Biden at his inaugural said, enough of us have come together to carry all of us forward. And you know, I hope that's true of the nation, but I believe it's true about Grace Church that um, enough of us have come together to carry all of us forward. And I I'm, I'm really am so grateful to God for the work of our session and for our leaders. And today, uh, we're going to see that lived out in our congregational meeting because this is our Presbyterian way. And we are going to share communion together where we remember the who of Jesus Christ. We, we're moving forward with God's grace and with God's help. And on February 14th, during our worship service, our new leaders will not answer the question, what are your plans? They're not going to answer, when will you accomplish them? They're not going to answer, where will you start? They will answer this question. Who is your Lord and Savior? 
And the answer, they won't answer, the new leaders won't say, uh, the way of Jesus Christ, uh, the teaching of Jesus Christ, uh, the words of Jesus Christ. The only answer that will do is Jesus Christ. That's the only answer to the question, who is your Lord and Savior? The only answer for us today and the only answer one day for the whole world. Lord, help us to continue to know you, to be in relationship with you, to abide in you, and to invite you to abide in us. Bless us with an intimacy with you so that we can be you in this world. And bless us now as we offer ourselves all that we have with um, generosity and love in the same way that God offered God's own self so generously to us. Amen.